it's interesting what happened to Drake Jackson. And I, I want to I want to go through this a couple different ways. You had John Lynch, you had Kyle Shedhead, you had Chris Kosarek all come out and say he just lost his strength. And so he was a healthy scratch for the last five weeks of the season in the playoff run. They asked what happened to him down the stretch last year, and here's Drake Jackson. Uh, towards the end of the season, I would say my body wasn't the same as it was starting the season, and I know that, of course, it's going to wear down, but um, I feel like I didn't have enough. So, you know, I just come out and keep working and try to have what I need for the rest of the season. And I don't, I don't know if people understand how difficult it is for certain body types to maintain strength during the season. It's hard because you go through phases, right? And so, like, as a coach or a player, you're spending all offseason right now, even OTAs. You are getting bigger. You're getting stronger. You're keeping your weight on, all those things. But the NFL season, once it starts, you're talking about, you know, a 24-week for the 49ers, right? If you're talking preseason, you're talking the 18 weeks of the season, then you're talking, you know, the five weeks of the postseason. Like you're you're even going past 25 weeks where you are practicing, running, playing, and it's just so hard to keep up weight and muscle mass. Now you're still lifting weights and all those things, but man, if you're battling through an injury and you can't work, let's say your shoulders messed up. Well, upper body's done. You can't do back. I hurt my rotator cuff skied. Uh, out of Mammoth. What's up, Sport Mammoth Brewing Company? I didn't hurt myself because I was drinking at Mammoth Brewing Company, but I, like I messed up my rotator cuff a little bit. I haven't been able to do shoulders, chest, back for two months. Like it affects you. I'm not a world class athlete by any stretch, but you get dinged up playing football in the season. You mess up your ankle. Guess what? You think you're doing freaking, you know, <laughs> alternating lunges and all this stuff? No, plyometrics. No, you're not. It's difficult to maintain mass for certain body types. Now, Here's the good news. Drake Jackson isn't coming off, you know, getting ready for the draft and pro days and visits and all that stuff. No, no, no. He has known what he has needed to do. Here's his response. Oh, I love this, man. This kid's awesome. What was the question was framed something along. What was your response to being a healthy scratch? Because he got benched. He did not take part. He didn't get one playoff snap didn't even suit up what was his response to being benched listen to this kid's maturity i'm really i really like to just you know not go through the motions but i say you know understand why things are happening to me when they're happening so you know i feel like everything happens for a reason so when they sat me you know i kind of had to you know kind of take myself from the game and see you know what what else is going on that i need to be doing uh so i like i'm doing now so basically, I say it kind of helped me uh, in a way because, you know, instead of me, you know, being mad or sad from being, you know, taken out of the game, I figured out things that I needed to do to help myself, to better myself further on. Yeah. It, it's how you respond. You know, yeah, I I believe in the adage, football does build character. The, the old saying is football doesn't build character, it reveals it. I disagree with that a little bit. I think football can't build character, but it 100% reveals it. It shows who you are. And when you are a professional athlete, this is your career. A lot of people, it's their identity. It's what they've done since they were, you know, I started playing tackle football in Texas. I think I was seven years old, right? Like, this was my life. It was a part of everything I have did even longer than I was a student. And I went to grad school. Like football is and was who I was like, that's, that's part of my identity, which is weird to say, but it was an avenue in which I started to care about things. Like that's what brought me into my work ethic and, you know, camaraderie and all those things. It shows who you are. And when people meet adversity, getting benched, how do you respond? This dude responded. He responded. And is he going to be, you know, a, a five-year starter or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. Does he have the tools to do it? Yes. Does he have the attitude to do it? Hell yes. I, I love that. <laughs> Look at Tara. He says, Drake not missing any arm days in the gym. Uh, buys and tries are swole. 
you didn't see that a lot in the future it, or in the past. And one of my critiques about him was strength. He was bendy. He was flexible. He was athletic. He was not straight. He didn't play strong. Not in college. He didn't last year either. He went on, you know, I, I, I cut this clip, but I didn't want to put it on there. He's like, oh, my bench press is up to 315 pounds now. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy to me. Like, that's not a lot. But you look at him, he's got 34-inch arms. Like, this dude's got long arms. He's long. He's lean. He's got an 82-inch wingspan. The longer your arms, the harder bench press is. And so, again, John Chapman, not a world-class athlete. I benched 300 pounds in high school. Um, I was into powerlifting and all that stuff. But, like, the fact that Drake Jackson, who is an NFL player, I am very far from. <laughs> But, like, you know, he talked about being part of the four-plate club and squat. Not a lot. That's not a lot. That is not a lot. Um, but he's getting there. He has the flexibility. And a lot of time, whenever you have all that muscle mass, that's where the flexibility starts to dissipate because the muscle, right, it keeps it tight, literally. Uh, this guy, what's up, man? He says... Drake looks beefed up, hoping his cardio has gotten better also because he was tired second half of the season. Yeah, he's got a lot to do. There, there's no doubt about it. And so you've got to reassess and make things the way that they need to be. Now, this, I, I played, I built this whole segment up. Whenever I was doing my notes, right? Like, I always, this is a problem I have is like, oh, this is the best part. We're leading with this. We're leading with the best part. And then I'm like, oh, but these other clips are good too. But man, this is the best clip. This is what I wanted to talk about. So everything kind of set up to this 15-second clip. What is his goal? All right? You responded well to being benched. You admitted you were worn down in the second se in the second part of the season. You got the right attitude. You put in the time. What is your goal, Drake Jackson? Uh, my biggest goal is to you know help my team. And in, in any way I can, you know, to, to win. So if that if that's the case and they want to put me there, then that's what I'm going to just have to do. But regardless, I'm just trying to, you know, stack a day and uh, win in any type of way we can. Whew. Whew. Get chill bumps, baby. His goal is not for more playing time. His goal is not to start or Pro Bowl. No. What's the foundation? I got to help my team, man. It's about the brothers that I fight with, that I work out with, that are in my locker room, that I bleed with, that I fight for. Those are the types of things that are paramount to this team and the roster construction that we're going through. You know, we're doing the 49ers um, roster countdown, right? The 91 shows, which I just freaking love doing. Uh, I really do like the, doing those things. And I, I get to know these, <laughs> these background, you know, players that I have ranked 81st and 85th and whatever else. And there's just so many common themes about team captain and, you know, off the field work to help other people and attitudes that just reflect teamwork and camaraderie. That's not an accident. It's not an accident. Whenever you have the culture that the 49ers have created, it's not an accident. They have fought for this and it reflects it really, really does. It, this is an old clip. I think this was during the playoff run, but I went back and pulled this up. Eric Armstead, probably one of my favorite people on this team. He, he had a guest spot on Adam Schefter's podcast. Again, three-time Walter Payton, man of the year. But listen to him talk. This is Eric Armstead talking about the culture of the 49ers. I don't know if it's unusual. You know, I've been here, you know, eight years. Uh, so I've seen the, the culture and the, that, um, you know, Kyle and John have built here. And uh, I think it's I think it's been like this for a while. Um, you know, we love playing with one another. We have a lot of fun. Um, everybody's happy for each other's success, and you know, we really don't bring in a lot of guys who uh, who you know are the opposite of that. You know, are self centered and um, you know more focused on themselves. And uh, you know, they do a great job of you know who they bring in and add to our culture each year. And um, you know, the the main guys who've been here kind of you know continue that culture. Um, each year, but you know, I think it's not, it's not unusual because I've been, I've been here. I don't know what it's like other places. Right. This, that's the thing, right? That clip was months ago. 
but he's in the D line room working with Drake Jackson all the time. Like you could saw, there's a Venn diagram of the phrases that were just used that overlap in these clips I played for you today, even though they are what five months apart, it doesn't matter because he's not talking about individual things. He's talking about, he's like, I don't know. It's just been like that here since I've been here for eight years. Well, guess what? That doesn't happen on accident. You build that. Kyle and John have built that by targeting these types of guys that are Drake Jackson, all the way down to a guy like Avery Young, who I just recorded his, you know, 90 man roster series. I think he's like number 81 for us, but it's just like, golly, you read his quotes from the coaches staff in high school and college, and they all say the same damn thing. He cares about his team. I wish we had 11 guys like this that care that much about football and care about their teammates and care about like protecting his brothers and it's it happens for a reason it's it's not an accident the 49ers rush podcast